ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego with the beautiful Karina, my lovely Promontita. And we are waiting patiently for our K-1 visa to get adjudicated at the service center in California. Just like you guys are waiting patiently for your K-1 visas to get adjudicated at the service center also, whether it's in California, Texas, wherever. And, uh, you know, our NOA-1 letter is dated April 18th, 2022, and we are now in April 2023, and so we're in the one-year anniversary of waiting, <laughs> probably next week. We don't count days. That's absolutely insane to count days. We just keep track of the months. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, is about Cambodia, beautiful Cambodia, our friends in Cambodia, and our friend Chopper Harley watching us on YouTube. This is your YouTube channel, and, and Chopper Harley wants to talk about Cambodia, so here's a video about Cambodia, and visas, and embassy, and all that kind of stuff. Come on along. Now, Cambodia, okay, also known as Kampuchea, is officially called the Kingdom of Cambodia. It is a country located in the southern portion of the Indo-Chinese Peninsula uh, in Southeast Asia and it spans an area of 69,898 square miles. Now I didn't tell you what that is in kilometers because I don't know and I don't care because I live in the US of A and we work in miles. Now Cambodia is bordered by Thailand to the northwest and Laos to the north and uh, Vietnam to the east and the Gulf of Thailand to the southwest. So they're surrounded by friendly countries. And the capital city and the largest city in uh, Cambodia is Phnom Penh. Now the sovereign state of Cambodia has a population of over 17 million people and uh, that's a lot of people. And Buddhism is enshrined in the constitution as the official state religion and is practiced by more than 97% of the population. And Com Cambodia's minority groups include Vietnamese, Chinese, uh, Cham, Chams, and 30 hill tribes. So there are lots of tribes uh, still living in Cambodia, which is good. Uh, Cambodia has a tropical monsoon climate of two seasons, only two seasons, and the country is made up of a central floodplain around the Tonle Sap Lake and the Mekong Delta, okay? And uh, Cambodia is surrounded by beautiful mountainous regions. Now, I like mountains uh, so long as it's not cold when I go visit them. Like I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the capital of Cambodia and the largest city is Phnom Penh, and it is also the political and economic and cultural center of, of Cambodia. Now, the kingdom is an elective constitutional, constitutional monarchy with a monarch. Currently, Norodom uh, Siarhomoni, who was chosen by the royal council of the throne, he's the head of the state. Head of state. Uh, the head of the government is the prime minister, currently Hun Sen, and he is the longest serving non-royal leader in Southeast Asia who has ruled Cambodia since 1985. Now, Cambodia's climate, like the rest of Southeast Asia, is dominated by monsoons, uh, which are known as tropical and wet dry because of the distinctly marked seasonal differences. So it's either raining or it's not raining. Now, I always investigate the climate of any country before I go visit for a vacation, and Cambodia has a temperature range from 21 degrees to 35 degrees centigrade, or 70 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm all in. If it's above 70 degrees, I'm good. And also, don't, don't forget, they experience tropical monsoons, like I already mentioned. Now, the southwest monsoons blow inland, bringing moisture-laden winds from the Gulf of Thailand and the Indian Ocean from May through October. So if you want to get soaking wet and hot, visit Cambodia through May, May through October. Now the northeast monsoon ushers in the dry season, which lasts from November through April. Okay, and the country experiences the heaviest heaviest rainfall from September through October. Okay, with the driest period occurring in January and February. Now most of the rural households depend on agriculture, 
and its sub-related uh, and its related subsectors for some, you know, for for their making a living, uh, including rice, timber, fish, uh, garments, and rubber, which are Cambodia's main exports. Okay, major exports, and the International Rice Institute, or the IRRI, reintroduced more than 750 traditional rice varieties to Cambodia from its rice seed bank in the Philippines. So they got a seed bank in the Philippines with all this rice and they took 750 different kinds of rice and they sent it to Cambodia so they can plant this, okay? And they've been collecting, the Philippines I guess, have been collecting all these different kinds of rice seeds since the 1960s. Now the garment industry represents the largest portion of Cambodia's manufacturing sector and accounting for 80% of the country's exports, okay? And in 2012, we're going back a few years, the exports grew uh, $4.61 billion, up over 8% since 2011. And in the first half of 2013, the garment industry reported exports worth $1.56 billion US. And the garment industry employs 335,400 people of which 91% are female. And we appreciate that, ladies and ladies working hard over there in Cambodia. And the, tour, I mean, the tourism industry is also the industry's, uh, the country's, excuse me, second largest source of hard currency after the textile industry. So, all you American tourists, go to Cambodia and spend that money because it helps their economy. Now, I'm all in on souvenirs, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Cambodia produces some really beautiful souvenirs for you tourists, like the traditional scarf, the scarf, the traditional scarf, which is called the, the krama. They got beautiful ceramics, they got, beautiful, they got scented soaps, candles, spices. They make beautiful wood carvings, uh, lacquerware, silver plates, uh, painted bottles uh, con containing infused rice wine. And, they, and uh, so you, if you go to Cambodia, you got to get some souvenirs to bring home to, the, to your home country. And now let's talk about food, my favorite subject in the whole world. Let's talk about Cambodian food. Now the cuisine of Cambodia contains like tropical fruits, soups, noodles, very popular noodles. And key ingredients that they use are kaffir lime, lemongrass, garlic, fish sauce. I got fish sauce in the in the closet back there when I make uh, Thai curry, uh, soy sauce, tamarind, ginger, oyster sauce, coconut milk, and black pepper. And some delicacies from Cambodia are the nom ban chok, fish amok, and aping, whatever that is. And the country also boasts various distinct distinct local street foods. Ooh. Cambodia is on my list of vacation countries. I love to try different street foods. Now, also the French influenced uh, the Cambodian cuisine also, and included in their in their uh, food is the uh, Cambodian red curry. I like Thai curry uh, with toasted baguette bread. Now, the toasted baguette bread is dipped in the curry and eaten. Now, Cambodian red curry is also eaten with rice and rice vermicelli noodles. And I would have to probably say that hot chicken red curry is my favorite curry on the planet. Uh, probably the most popular dine-out dish uh, is the is Kuev Tiev, which is a pork broth rice, okay, uh, with a noodle soup. Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, with fried garlic, scallions, green onions, and various toppings whichever they might be. So, okay, beef balls, shrimp, pork liver, and or lettuce. Now, Kampot pe pepper is reputed to be the best in the world and is, accompanies crab at the Kep Crab Shacks and squid in the restaurants on the Oi Throhak Jet River. So they're into seafood too. Sounds like a place to be. And the cuisine, this cuisine is relatively unknown in the world compared to that of its neighbors, Thailand and Vietnam. But let's now talk about K-1 visas and the U.S. Embassy in Cambodia. Come on. Now, the United States Embassy in, in Phnom Penh, that's where it's located at. The U.S. Embassy is in Phnom Penh, 
well, they will continue, they are right now providing all immigrant visa and non-immigrant visa services to Cambodians and resident third country nationals. So if you are not a resident of Cambodia, let's suppose you live in another country and you happen to be in Cambodia living, the U.S. Embassy will help you with the visa also. Uh, now, you know, while the United States Embassy in Phnom Penh aims to process cases as soon as they possibly can, there's likely to be an increased wait time for completing visa services uh, due to substantial backlogs, which is, it seems to be a global pattern around the whole world. Every U.S. Embassy in the world is trying to play catch up right now. And the MRV fee, which is the non-immigrant visa fee, uh, used to schedule your interview appointment in, uh, where it is, is valid for one year from the date of payment. So relax, once you pay your visa fee, it's good for a year. You won't time out. Now what I like about the embassy here in Cambodia is they have a, uh, a website you can go to right here which you can log into if you want to request an emergency visa appointment. Okay, so if you have a dire emergency, they have a separate website you can go to to schedule an emergency visa appointment. Now the address of the U.S. Amb Embassy uh, in Cambodia, uh, I'll just put it right up in here. Okay, and then if you have any email inquiries, you want to email the U.S. Embassy in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, uh, you know, regarding visas, immigrant, non-immigrant visas, that's the e email address right there. And what is also good about this embassy is that they have a call center and representatives are on standby waiting to take your phone calls to help you with your visa questions, okay? And they're open Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock in the morning, their time, till 4 p.m., excluding holidays and Khmer holidays. Now, if you want to call the U.S. Embassy in Cambodia, there's a phone number right here. That's if you live in Cambodia, that's for the beneficiaries, and if you are a U.S. citizen working a visa for your beneficiary, then you call this number from the United States, okay? In fiscal year 2022, 103 K-1 visas were approved by the U.S. State Department at the U.S. Embassy in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. So that's good news, and very soon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you will have your K-1 and your K-2 visa and your passports. You're gonna be flying on an airplane to the United States of America with your visas and your passports. And soon you will be here where you can get married and start your new life in the USA with your new husband or wife. And we look forward to that. We wanna help you get through this process. And uh, thanks for watching this video about Cambodia. To our friends in Cambodia, we send you our best wishes. And to Chopper Harley, this video was for you. And we will see you soon in the U.S. of A. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.